Hey folks, it's James, and a lot of architects and designers don't even realize Procreate can be used to draw to accurate scale. So when I show them my system, it completely changes how they work. Now this video might feel a little slower than my usual, and that's on purpose, because it's a lesson taken straight from the Procreate Accelerator, one of the free courses folks get when they join my live draw along workshop as a kind of textbook supporting the five live draw along sessions. So grab your iPads, download the free PDF that describes each step of this process and get ready to learn how to design to accurate architectural scale in Procreate faster, better, and more beautifully than ever before. One of the most common actions we'll do in this class is to launch a new project by tapping the import button and then going to our iCloud drive and bringing in one of our grids. And you can see here the Imperial grids 17 by 11 and 24 by 18 and the metric grids A2 and A3. So I'll show you, I'll launch a 17 by 11 Imperial grid and you can choose the ones whether they have a quarter inch spacing or eighth inch spacing or they have a larger emphasis or no emphasis and I'll choose this eighth inch by with an emphasis and you'll see what that means in a moment and there's your eighth inch and here's your emphasis now the reason this is so helpful is because these grids come in at 11 by 17 by 300 dpi and if you were to count these emphases you would see that it's 17 by 11 and why that's important is because the grids are also linked to the scale rulers so if i now tap the actions menu and i tap the add button and i tap the insert a file button I can now go back to the main page of my iCloud Drive and find my scales, imperial scales, and I think in this case I'll launch a half scale because it's easier to move it around. And I'll choose right off the top uh, the eighth and quarter inch half architect scale. And that comes in and you can see that when I move that over and it's ready to be moved right away you can see the marching ants indicating that it's ready to go and watch what happens when I move the zero over to match the large emphasis of the grid and notice here I'm tapping to make that move one pixel at a time a terrific part of the move tool now if I turn off the move tool and I come over here, you'll see that 8 feet falls on one of the emphasized grid lines, and 16 feet, 24, and on and on. So the scale rulers and the grids are coordinated to work together, and it's a very helpful way sometimes to launch a project, begin a new project. And by the way, notice that these are ping files, so if I move the ruler under the grid, you'll still see the ruler but you'll see the lines of the grid over it. And also note that the grid lines can be reduced in opacity to make you as comfortable as you feel in case you're like me and don't want to see the grid as a very dominant thing and want to be able to design over it. So typically I'll get to this point, I'll launch a new layer, I'll choose my technical pen, I've got my color selected, and I can just start designing right over that grid. Oh, hey, uh, did you download the free PDF for this lesson? It's right down here. You can also get the details for when the next live draw along workshop begins in the link in the description below. Okay, back to the good stuff. So let's look at how all of this ties together. The uh, canvas size and the importable scale rulers and the importable FF and E that's all part of your assets that you downloaded at the beginning of the class. So let's say that you want to be designing, you want to use a grid as a background element and you want to design a house or a living room or something like that and you want to design to scale. What I would recommend is that you go to your iCloud Drive, you go to your Imperial Grids, 
let's import a eighth inch title block grid with a one eighth one eighth scale with one inch emphasis divisions. We'll bring that in. And remember we talked about how each of these represents eight feet. So let's look at how we bring in that an FF and E template, for example. So here is up in the actions menu, you will go to the add button. You will go to insert a file. In an iCloud drive, you'll go back to your main drive listings. And let's pick the FF&E Imperial template at eighth scale. And we'll tap that. And let's pick the smaller of the two. There's a quick scale, a quick FFE template, which is smaller. I'll pick that. And now if you look at that, I will tap out of the transformation and move tool. And let's look up at this and what would be an easy thing to scale. You can see here a billiard table. If I move this over to make it a little easier, a billiard or a pool table is roughly eight feet. A ping pong table is nine feet, so it goes beyond that. And here's a typical dining table at about 42 inches. So that's the relationship. It's because this template is created at eight scale, also at 300 DPI, that it stays in scale with the 300 DPI grid template. And you can see here, rectangle, copy and paste to select piece you want. So we've just done all that. And again, we'll, we'll get into this later on, but to select any of these pieces, you would simply go to the selection. I like to use the rectangular selection mode because uh, all of these have been designed to be selected by a rectangle without interfering in any of their neighbors. And here I'll use the copy and paste command at the bottom after selecting that table. And the wonderful thing about copy and paste is it adds that table to its own layer. It copies it, pastes it to its own layer, which means that your original template is undamaged and remains at your beck and call, ready for use the next time you want to pull up one of the items. But you can turn it off too, and then you can just move around the table that you selected. And then the last piece of that is that if we also add, let's go back to the actions menu, let's go to the add button, and let's insert a file. And this time when we go back to the iCloud Drive homepage, we'll pull up one of our scale rulers. And I'm going to pull up one of the half scale rulers because they're a little more convenient. And I'll go here to the half scale architect scale that has the one eighth and one quarter divisions on it. And I'll bring that in and you can see that that comes in at the same scale. I'll enlarge this. So again, it's at the same scale as the grid template. It's at the same scale as the table, seven foot six table. And that is how this ecosystem of tools, all of the assets that we've already downloaded, as long as they're at 300 DPI, they continue to work together and uh, can be used uh, whether you're drawing freehand. And let's go back and do some drawings. So if I were here, I could enlarge this and say, well, I've got a 12 foot room, okay? So I could start here and just come on over and come on. I know that's eight, and I know that's another four. And I'll move that scale out of the way. And I can bring that scale back in at any point to check any of the dimensions as I sort of freehand, but with the grid as an underlay as I begin designing over that. So that is how the ecosystem of all these 300 DPI items works together. Don't forget to grab the free PDF that comes with this lesson down in the description below. And to learn more about the Live Draw Along workshop, check out that link in the description below too. Now you've just learned Procreate can draw to scale, but almost nobody knows there are two important ways to do it. 
One for when you're just sketching plans and designs freehand from scratch on a blank screen, and the other for when you import an existing plan and have to bring it up to scale inside Procreate. And in the video right here, we're going to do both. So be sure not to miss it. So be sure you don't miss this one, and I'll see you in the next video.